In the next uh, 30 minutes, I'll try to share with you uh, my experience in Sunai uh, using systems uh, to, and technology to reduce fraud and more than that, to avoid losing assets from the company. Now I'll try to explain to you what is Sunai. It's a Portuguese group based in Portugal, but now it's worldwide spread. So I will speak a little bit about the corporate profile, then the core business of the Sonai Group, how we are organizing the internal audit department, what we perform to, to avoid fraud and loss of assets in process and compliance audit, food safety, and information systems. In the end, I will try to explain to you the main results of the last years of these activities. So, Sonai Group operates, the core business are on food retail with Sonai MC and in specialized retail with Sonai SR. Then we have the core partnerships where we are not the only shareholders with Sonai Sierra that have shopping centers and Sonai Com that operates on telecom and media sectors. Then we have Sonai RP, that is the retail real estate, and investment management, that are some uh, not so big uh, businesses that we have uh, congregated here on this sub -holding. We are, as I told you, uh, now internationalizing some years from now, and we are present in uh, all continents uh, around the globe uh, with several businesses. Some figures, uh, our turnover last year, it was 500.7 thousand million euros. Our recurrent EBITDA is 671 million euros and the CapEx was 475 million euros. Just to, to know who we are. We have 40,000 employees, and so we are the largest Portuguese employer. We have some distinctions in several areas that I suppose it's important because they are international and recognize uh, the work that we do. Uh, we have some on the sustainability areas, on the technology, risk management, on the brand image that we renewed last year, and also in the environment. There are some examples. The core business. The core business, as I told you before, is with the retail, food and non-food retail. This is the food retail business. We have nine brands, uh, each in operating different kind of stores, all in food. And uh, Sonai MC is the food-based unit market leader in Portugal. We have 444 stores, and this is important for, for you to understand the difficulties to, to audit and to, to make loss prevention, because we have 6.5 million records a day that corresponds more or less to 500,000 transactions, sales transactions, by day. In Sonai specialized retail, we have uh, formats in electronics, sports and textiles. We have seven brands and we are present in three countries operating directly the stores in Portugal, Spain, Turkey and also in Middle East but with franchised stores. We have 562 stores and we have 1.5 million records a day that corresponds roughly to 100,000 transactions, sales transactions as you can see in three different countries operated directly. How we are organized? In the internal audit, we are responsible for the core business and also related business and uh, active investments. The other two, the shopping centers and the telecom, have their own organization of internal audit. The core business is organized that way, so in each business, we have our own board, 
uh, and that operates separately, the marketing operations commercial, and then we have shared services where it, it, we can see also internal audits. The three that I, I put there in green is the, the functions that work related with uh, control and loss prevention. It's planning and control, internal audit, and, shrink and shrinkage and loss prevention. Uh, using that graphic to, to help to illustrate, if you put likelihood and impact, measuring the risks of the, face, the company faces, the, the more strategic and also the when off risks uh, are more controlled by planning and control. And then the operational risks are more sub controlled and, uh, by internal audit and shrinkage and loss prevention. Shrinkage and loss prevention works more in the protection uh, of uh, secu security, protection systems of the goods, uh, and also is more concerned with shop shoplifting. Uh, they all do all the work based on data analysis and product analysis. For instance, I remember when they started, we have uh, on the razor blades a shrinkage of 70%, so uh, we have to stop that because we are working for the supplier. Um, it's one of their concerns, and they also work on the efficient see problems like operational problems in bed buying because we, in food as we sold perish, perishables if you make a bed buying you have lost uh, you have waste or shrinkage depends how you treat it but it's the same you lost you lost money internal audit is looking for the op operational business risks and in, in different ways we do that just trying to, to, to understand that now it's tough times and uh, in times of economic crisis risks and acts of fraud increases normally. If this is the fraud triangle, in the incentive pressure uh, corner, there is a strong additional motivation because of the, the economical crisis to increase income by any means, legitimate or not. Also on the opportunity side, uh, grows because in downturn sometimes companies uh, reduce costs and reduce the internal resources with control functions which results on the expansion of the corner of opportunity. In the rationalization is also easier. Uh, some people is led to think that uh, behavior that before was considered unethical now is acceptable and justify because people feel that are unfairly treated. So, but we can hack uh, also during these times and in downturns the attention must be reinforced. For instance, we can take some actions in the incentive pressure to reduce risk of fraud. We can reinforce the knowledge of the company code of ethics and conduct and the awareness and training on ethical behavior. We have a program in Sonai with e-learning uh, to ensure that everyone in the organization knows the, ethicals, the ethical code and uh, knows the ethical behavior that Sonai wants to all his employees. In the opportunity, we need to perform audits to the most critical areas and activities. We must know where we put our resources, effort to, to to, to know that we are acting in the most critical areas. And establish clear rules and procedures is also very important. In the rational, uh, rationalization area uh, corner, we need to penalize those who committed fraud. If you don't do nothing, the other person uh, uh, thinks that it's, it's okay to, to make fraud because nothing happened. How we are organized in internal audit to, to face that and to deal with this. I report direct to the president, I early and to the president of the group and uh, functionally to the board of audit and finance committee. And I have three directors working with me, one on process and compliance audit, 
Another one on food safety audits that are all food engineers, and I later explain why we have that function, and information system audits. This is the process that we have. Mainly this is the process for the uh, audit checklist. We have an audit database with all the risks, legislation and the recommendation standard. We do the planning on, also on that software that we developed. We have the audits, we perform the audits, and then the report is automatically uh, issued by the system, and we can edit and, and change it. And then we have also uh, uh, a lot, uh, some indicators that tell us how the business is running and how the findings are evolving. In the process and compliance audit, what we do to avoid fraud and to avoid losses for the company? In a very simplistic way, there is the retail supply chain. And in each of these areas, you, we, have, we face risks of potential fraud. I highlighted here some key risk areas of fraud, like suppliers selection and negotiation process. Range definition by business unit is also a, a critical area for fraud. Purchase of goods, it's not only fraud, but uh, also errors. For instance, we have an error non controlled this year that someone buy a toy uh, for, for, for Christmas, and instead of ordering seven, 700 uh, toys, he orders 700,000. So we have toys for, I don't know, 100 years. So it's not only fraud that can damage the, the, the assets and, uh, of the company and the cash of the company. It's not only fraud. It's also errors and lack of efficiency. Uh, commercial revenues, uh, so we have some problems here also, and I suppose that everyone has, uh, in making, inputting the wrong conditions uh, in the system that we, you deal with supplier, and then we, we input the, the wrong tax or in the wrong field, and it does calculate it right, uh, the, the, the commercial revenues that you have to, to debit to, to the supplier. Also in the supplier payments, we also have uh, already uh, fraud inclusive, not only errors. In the logistics, in the transfers between warehouses and stores, and transfer between stores and also transportation for the stores. Uh, now we are facing some problems here uh, because we have international transports from Portugal to Spain uh, because we have some central warehouses in Portugal and from other countries also. And we are uh, facing that to the merchandise that we sent out from the warehouses is not the same that reaches the stores. So now we have to put in place, it was last month, uh, internal audit with logistics, operational people. Uh, we put in place another process with another uh, plastic film uh, that is black, so it's, it, you cannot see what is inside, and also if you damage it, it's impossible to put it back again, and the personalized stripe uh, that we put with glue uh, above, uh, outside of the, the plastic, of black plastic, so we know when the transportation people uh, have stolen goods from from, from, from our warehouses or our stores. In the inventories, we also have sometimes false countings, false count, countings of stocks to, to make better results and to achieve the goals uh, and to not have shrinkage. Also shrinkage in warehousing and stores, we have to install CCTVs mainly in the electronics uh, warehouses of the electronics brands. In sales, we have a lot of uh, potential areas of fraud. In sales itself, we can have sales, for instance, not registered, is more easy to do, or with different prices. In cl client returns, on voids, 
On sales price change, if it's not controlled, anyone can change a price and sell with a different price. We have that. We have some uh, employees that sell bicycles to, 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 to relatives with the price of, I don't know, but uh, a very cheap product. Store cash funds, loyalty card program. This is very important for us to protect that uh, asset because uh, it was a case study now. We have three million cards in a population of 10 million in Portugal. We have three million cards, three, mil three million clients that use in 90% of, um, of our sales are done with the loyalty card. Uh, gift card, we also have already problems with fraud with, with this. System access management is very critical. Online sales, and also we have a lot of fraud in after sales services. In what's related to the supporting of the process, uh, the business process, we have key risk areas and store constructions and refurbishments on order and receipt transfer and is investment in assets and service processes like advertising, safety, whatever, and also in travel expenses. Also, with all that risks, the uh, business increased its complexity. Um, we started in 2002, we didn't start in 2002, but in 2002 we started the internal audit function. We have 245 stores, we are only in Portugal, we have only eight brands, and the audit is store by store and is very manual. We go to the stores and we physically look to the, to the, to the tickets from the cashier to, to see if something wrong is happening. So it's very difficult to detect anything with this kind of, of audit. We did monthly analysis and we did analysis per exception. To, to, it was more difficult because we, actually in 2002 we have three different POS software solutions. So we don't have the same data in all the stores. In 2011, in 2012, we have 1,010 stores in three countries. We have 17 brands and 80 million daily records, as I told you. And we do a daily analysis two days after. We have a gap of two days in the analysis. Um, now we just have one software uh, system in the, in the POS. So it, it's easier on that way. Uh, and we have a lot of systems that we implemented to do the audits. Now, we only go to stores to confirm physically with documents that what we detected on the head office, analyzing that on the computer. So we, we came from a, a reactive audit and now we perform proactive outing, uh, auditing, so what you call it. In the traditional audit, it was very late and casuistic detection, uh, as I explained before to you, because it is, was very manual. So when you detect some problem, some lack of control, some fraud, uh, it already passed many mouses or more, and so the losses are much more important. Today, with continuous auditing, with a systematic and preventive detection, we can uh, detect the fraud uh, two days after happen and act uh, earlier, so we uh, avoid um, more time uh, being uh, robbed by uh, clients or, or, or employees. We have an example uh, this year already in Spain, in our stores in Spain, in, in electronics stores, uh, we detected that with one sales ticket, in the next day, we have 24 returns of the same mer merchandise. In the, the, the sale was done uh, in Madrid, in a store in Madrid, and the next day, it was returned in 24 stores across Spain, in Malaga, in, in Vigo, in 24 stores. Uh, what do we know? It, it's uh, 
uh, so we try, we, we act, react immediately, we co call the stores and ask them to do the, the, the copy of the return of the ticket that was returned. The tickets are faked, but are very well faked. It's very difficult to, to know that it's a fake receipt. And it's all Asian people. Uh, that allowed us to, to, to alert all the stores, and the next day, the police went and, and actually have uh, take two or three persons to, to, to the headquarters, to the police station, and we stopped that. Uh, but th they are trying ever and ever. So next, uh, last month, we have uh, another one again, and same persons. So it's more and more important, the, the proactive and continuous auditing. What are the main activities to respond to these risk frauds? We have compliance audits with checklists on those risk areas. We have process audits trying to, to know what are the root causes, the lack of controls, and to avoid lo losses. Uh, here we act as an internal cons consulting uh, function uh, because it's much easier and it's more, more cheaper to the company if you, when you design the process or the systems, you have already put in place the controls, then later, one year or two years after, you detect on an audit that the, the software is not correct, doesn't have the proper controls, it's much more expensive to the company to make a new software or to make a new release of software. So it's much more easier and it's better if you try to work previously. And then we do monitoring, as I told you before, uh, on a daily basis on the sales and purchases areas. What I have some examples of the key risks indicators that we monitor daily. We monitor daily the sales price changes, client returns, voids, sales without code, change in payment methods, because normally that is associated with fraud. People trade a credit card for money. And coupon and discounts, we have a lot of fraud here. Uh, it diminished in, in the food uh, retail because of the loyalty card, because now every discount is on the loyalty card, but um, electronically. But in the other, in the Sonai specialized retail, we still have physical coupons and discounts, and we have a lot of problems with, with fraud on that. And loyalty card also we monitor every day. In the purchase, we monitor duplicated supplier invoices. We have already had some problems with the suppliers. Invoices with higher value than a threshold and match invoices for more than six months, that it's not normal and suppliers with the highest difference between the value of the invoice and the value of the reception. Food safety audits, it's another area that we have. Why? Because customers in food, uh, this is a function that works only for the food branch. Uh, in food, the, the customers are more and more concerned and aware with healthy of the uh, products and how safe they are. And we assist in last year's uh, a lot of cases that uh, have problems uh, with the food that we eat and that we buy in the stores. So here uh, are some examples of fraud that can happen in stores. Selling food products after due date, or the use, use by date. Misdescription of food, not necessarily, not necessarily unsafe, but is, it's a fraud, like product substituted with a cheaper alternative. For example, if you sell farm fish as a wild fish, the price is not the same. Also the quality. Incorrect information about the origin of fruits of, of, and vegetables or fish. 
This is, is mo much more important than fraud itself, because in, 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 I suppose, in the last two or three years, we have several cases. One year in England, uh, B, uh, BBC reporters is in YouTube uh, uh, dis, uh, disguise them, themselves as workers on a big retailer in, here in in UK, and they filmed the people from a store changing uh, dates from the products uh, and picking products from the floor, meat. Uh, that was a very big scandal, and that uh, retail company have some losses in the, at least on the image. We have also a, a case like that with the reporters in in Sweden, and the company faced it, it was during Christmas campaign. They have to stop all the Christmas campaign, in all the advertising in TV. They dropped 50 percent on the confidence of customers, and they dropped 30% of, of, on sales. So it's really an area of concern because it can make a much bigger damage in the company value and in the company uh, profits than a fraud for, by, for stolen a product. Uh, in the United States, uh, a food company uh, have to close went to bankruptcy because one mother buy uh, powder milk for a baby and the baby died. In the end, it was proved that the problem is, it was not on the supplier, it was, uh, it was not on the retailer, it was on the supplier side. But who suffered the consequence? It was the retailer because no one wants to buy on that retailer anymore and you have to close all the 200 stores. So here, we perform compliance audits, also process audits, also to, to as in, in, in traditional audit, to understand the root causes and define the standards that we want in the company. We also spend a lot of time in training because we, we, we find that more than 50% of the findings are on the behavior of the people. Then, in information systems audit, what we try to, to reach uh, the goals of information security is that the data is always available, that is reliable, and no one knows it that uh, should, not, should not have access to, to that data. Uh, you remember uh, for sure what happened with Sony with PlayStation and what happened several times already with credit card databases. So we are very concerned with confidentiality and special because, as I told you, 90% of our sales are done with our loyalty cards. So if someone can access to that information, it's, very, it's, very, it's a real problem for us. What are the main risks and sources of potential fraud is attacks to the organization's network. I suppose that one or two years ago, we have a hacker that uh, can connect by the, wired, um, the, the wireless link to one of our stores and shut down the store, shut down the POS, and we, uh, we get one morning without any sale. Vir viruses, uh, institutional websites deface, we have already uh, have that problem also, sift or leakage of confidential information, and data corruption is also one area of fraud, possible fraud. So we, what we do to avoid those frauds, we have I, in, information system audits to the data centers, to networks, servers, to the controls, Business continuity also is a concern for us, and IT security audits. So the main results, and uh, I'm getting to the end, the main results that we achieve with all of these is improved control and efficiency. These three functions, planning and control, internal audit, and shrinkage and loss prevention, 
and also with the improved operational efficiency and quality, we did a very big program with Kaizen Institute. It's a Japanese institute that works for Toyota and several other worldwide companies. Uh, and now our warehouses are more clean than the stores. And that is very important because that down uh, have a positive impact on shrinkage and also on sales because you know where the products are to put it on stores. Also, with the development of business systems, that now it's much more uh, efficient, we reached a 35% decrease on shrinkage between 2002 and 2011. This is very important and is a very big number when we are talking about uh, billions of euros of sales. We also have a 15% increase on market share. So it's not opposite. You can increase, uh, reduce shrinkage and increase sales. Uh, they don't work against. They work on the same, on same sense. And also very important for us and for a retailer is the, the trust. And uh, for the 10th consecutive year, we are nominated the, the trusted brand in Portugal by, by the Portuguese consumers. And this is very important for us. Okay. Thank you very much. Now I pass to Simon. <laughs>